Welcome to Scorched Earth Tarot. This is going to be a mid-month reading for the sign of Aries, Sun, Moon and Ascendant. Um, if you're after any extra information from how to book a personal reading to what my social media links are or um, <clears throat> how to find your Sun, Moon and Ascendant signs, if you don't know what they are, all of that information is down in the description box. Um, and working off some feedback that I've had in the last couple of weeks from my personal clients, um, it seems I've assumed a certain level of understanding of the difference between major and minor arcana uh, in the tarot and the court cards and the pips and stuff like that. Because I assume that those of you who watch me probably also watch a lot of other videos and that isn't necessarily the case. So I'm going to be putting up a video um, just kind of breaking down the different bits of the tarot. It's going to be quite short. It's not going to be an in-depth thing. It's not going to teach you how to read um, by any stretch, but just a basic overview of how it works. So that's something that I've got planned for the next few days. Also, um, natal charts. Now, I'm not an astrologist and I wouldn't have claimed to be, but I do have a basic understanding of natal charts and how they work. And I, I will be making a video on that for you at some point as well. So, you know, the relevance of me being a Leo Leo Capricorn. I will explain, um, as well as other aspects of it. It's going to be very basic, but it hopefully will help you understand a little better why it's a good idea to go and have a look at the videos for, you know, um, your different placements. <clears throat> Particularly, you know, if you're looking for a love reading specifically, and you know, you happen to be, let's say, or you know, an, an Aries Sun. But you're a Pisces Venus, you know, um, that would change dramatically the way that you relate to people in a loving sense. So that's what I've got planned anyway, and uh, hopefully I'll explain it a little better than I've explained it just there. But if that's something that you're interested in, keep your eyes peeled and subscribe or something like that, and then you'll get notified when it goes up. So let's have a look and see what we've got coming up for the second half of December because I know that the, the the general full month reading was pretty heavy um, and made me feel like I was probably connecting to a different group of Aries to whom I had been connecting for the previous few months um, but it seems like they were the ones that needed the message right there so that's what I went with I have no idea what's coming up for you right now so let's pull some cards and three cards for Aries the 15th to the 31st of December, please. Fair flying out. I don't take cards that I've dropped because I know that I've dropped them. I'll show you what's come out in a second. I just need one more card. deck the shadow card is the empress we're talking about fertility and abundance there potentially but the birth of new things into the world and that's quite relevant when we see what we've got down here um, <clears throat> the first card that you've got is the universe or the world in the standard deck and that talks about the completion of a cycle and it's a major completion you know, there's nothing um there's nothing frivolous about the end of this cycle but it's immediately followed by the Ace of Wands and then the Ten of Wands. I'm just going to pull a couple more cards so we can get some uh, some meat on these bones. And then we'll go through it. I'm intending these to be much shorter than the, than the general readings, so I'll try and keep it as quick as possible without feeling like I'm rocking through it at a pace. So, what's this? There we go. I feel like this probably is the previous group of, uh, or the December group of Aries. Page of Pentacles and the Empress again has flipped. Drop that one. I see 
see any of those. Alright. Page of sweets. So, <clears throat> yeah, more going through it. There's the ace of ones. I always meditate before I do any of the readings and I got hit with such a rush of energy I actually felt like I was going to pass out before I'd even touched any cards it was it was quite intense why is the ten of ones here ten of cups in reverse Interesting. The King of Wands has flown out, but it's in reverse. That could be you. I feel like it's possibly somebody you're dealing with, though. In which case, it would probably be a, a Leo. But it could be another Aries. It could be a Sagittarius. It could just be you feeling disempowered. We'll get to it. We'll see how it goes. Oh, fucking hell. Right. <clears throat> You've got three tens. Yeah. Right. Let's get through this. Bottom of this deck is Judgment. Now this can be the card of second chances, this can be the card of things resurrecting that you thought that you were dead, that were dead. You know, uh, situations, emotions, um, relationships, all that kind of thing. But I don't get that feeling from this card. We'll come back to that and I'll explain why in a bit. The first card you've got, like I said, is, is the universe. This is the end of a cycle, right? And I can tell you now, you have four tens on the table. So this is not only a day-to-day -day major ending that you are experiencing, but it is also the end of an energetic cycle that you have been sat in um, <coughs> up until this point. And it doesn't feel good. I, I can see that really strongly. Like the, I love the world card. Usually it depicts the four fixed signs, but it doesn't on here. So that, that would be Taurus, Scorpio, um, Aquarius and Leo but it's just a scene of some desolation uh, isolation as well I don't know if the camera's picking it up but there's there's a there's an ethereal looking woman trapped in the ice here she's it's like this and she seems frozen in time and space it seems a little like you don't know which direction to go in because you were trapped. It's so cold. It's such a cold card. I don't usually feel like that on his, but it's absolute stasis. <clears throat> knowing that everything's ended and not knowing how to proceed forward. And the first card that you've got to clarify that is the Ten of Swords, which is a really visceral scene. You know, it talks about heartbreak, betrayal, humiliation, being backstabbed literally lying on the floor and bleeding out but it's a 10 so like I said it's the end of a cycle it's an end to whatever has made you feel like this but for now as it as it is you don't feel like it's a positive thing it, the, there's not a sense of liberation implied by this ending because you're trapped in the ice it's a sense of lying on the ground just bleeding. But the sun is rising. And that's really important because it's always darkest before the dawn. You know? And here is the dawn. It's coming. It's coming, right? So whether you feel it or not, whatever has ended, you know, in your day-to-day -day existence, it's painful. But ultimately, I think it's going to be for your, your betterment. But almost certainly, no, actually. But this is a pain that you're going to have to work through. Now, these two cards jumped out together because I was only after two and I got three. And we got the Page of Swords and the Queen of Wands. Now, 
they're both court cards, so they can both indicate people, potentially. In which case, this would be a younger air sign. Aquarius, Gemini or Libra. And this could be you. I'm going to stick my neck out and say almost certainly this is you, because the astrological correspondence for the Queen of Wands is Aries. Right? So there you are. But what's separating you from this Ten of Swords, and you are looking the other way, and the Page of Swords is looking back at this damaged scene, is this. Yeah. Either a younger air sign or a message, information, communication of some description that somebody has brought forth to you that is cutting and is painful. And see how that, that works there. And you're looking away from it. Now, either you don't really... I feel like you're stuck. And I, I hear, I look at this, this woman who's in the ice and she's looking in exactly the same direction as the Queen of Wands. Perhaps an aspect of you feeling stuck is because you don't want to look at this. You don't want to look at this Ten of Swords scene. You don't want to look at the information that has come forwards. <clears throat> this feels quite heavy. That has come forwards that has left you feeling in that space. Or maybe it's an acceptance that this has happened and you are now looking to distance yourself from it. But I still feel really trapped. I feel really, really restricted by this world card. The next card that you've got though is the Ace of Wands and that is a true delight to see because that is fire element. It's the Ace of your suit. It's creativity, it's passion, it's, it's you know, it could be a new relationship but like, I don't really see that here. It's an opportunity, it's a gift that is offered to you and whether that's in the guise of a feeling that you have in your gut pulls you in a particular direction or whether it's an actual overt opportunity that is presented in front of you. Because you are Aries and because this is fire, because this is the seed of your suit, it's a new start, off in a different direction. But it feels reluctant. The Queen as she's sitting on the table is looking in the direction of, of the Ace of Wands and not at the past. It's like she desperately wants to go that way. She's in fact got the, she's got the ace in her hand right there. And she's looking in that direction. She looks like she's about to spring off and go. But there's something is holding her back a little bit. And I feel like it's this here, which has come out to clarify the ace of wands. It's the four of pentacles. And it talks about clinging to things. Yeah. It can talk about resource hogging and things like that, but in this card, this is something that's very important to this man. Whatever these pentacles represent, they're important. And they're so important that he's afraid to relinquish his grip on them for fear that he may never hold in his hand something like that again. And I feel like this is the thing that's stopping you from springing off and going in your particular direction. But the next card is the Six of Swords. It's a card of moving away from things that that no longer serve you, I guess. I get sick of trotting out those trite phrases that, that, that tarot readers use. But notice that the water on this side of the card is really choppy, you know, it's disturbed. And over here, it's calm. And they're headed off in that direction. So there could be an element of travel. Maybe you need to move, maybe you need to move away from things. But Whatever it is, it's leaving something behind. And what you're leaving behind is this, is, is clinging to this, whatever this is. So that you can start something new. And the queen is looking in that direction. The figure that is trapped in the ice is looking in that direction. You need to move forwards. You cannot look backwards. You're not looking backwards but still that resistance remains. 
you need to pick that apart and you need to work out what it is that you're clinging to because what you're clinging to is stopping you from being able to spring off. The final set of cards that we've got are all tens. Now, two of them are in the upright and both of them are the ten of wands. Right? You got the ten of cups, but it came out reversed. That's three tens right there, right? Endings, endings, endings to go with your other ending and your other ending. Now, Ten of Wands, your suit, again, we're talking about fire energy. We're talking about things that are just too hard. I mean, this is a card of burden. There's, there's, the depictions are virtually identical in this card. At some point, this chap had picked up all of these ones because the benefit that he would gain from transporting them back to his house, which is really, really close now, outweighed the cost to him. He's strong. Yeah. There's an indication that whatever these ones are, whatever these ones represent, when he gets them home, it would definitely benefit his life in some way. But for whatever reason, it's becoming too hard. Now, what I'm trying to work out is whether this is, this is your fear Because the Ten of Cups is complete emotional fulfilment and in the reverse, it is quite the reverse. It's a block on that. It is a removal of that. It's, you know, take it as it resonates to you, but it's... <clears throat> With the other cards on the table, it feels like this is out of reach now. <laughs> but it's whether this is what you're leaving behind or this is the fear that is stopping you moving quite quite in the way that you would like to, the fear that you will not experience this again, not letting a go of this because you know you can't get this. And that's not true. <clears throat> Actually, it isn't. Or the fear that trying to trying to get this again will put you in this position because whatever you've been through, it's been hard and it's been hurtful. You know? It's time to put the ones down. You don't need ten ones. You need one. That one. That one. Not these ones. Right. So are you... Is this restriction? Is this what's holding you back? You know, this fear here, is this what's stopping you? Why, does, why do all of the, the ones need to go to the house in one go? Like, it seems to me like this is a very awkward way of carrying ones. And if you just put five, six of them down, took those to the house, then came back and got the others, that would be a more sensible way of approaching this. You know, you don't have to carry the burden of everything all the time. I'm going to get some more clarifiers. Because your shadow card was the Empress talks about bringing new things into the world and the ace is bringing new things into the world and in order for new things to come into the world you have to create a space for them and at the moment it feels like your space is a big empty void and this is bothering you but the bigger the space you have to fill the more you can put into it is what i would say and the judgment card at the bottom of the deck there it could be counselling against trying to go back to this because ultimately it will be too hard and it will set you back. Oof. At the bottom of the deck we've got the Wheel of Fortune there as well. Or it could be requiring, requiring you to take a proper, make a proper judgement call on what it is that you've experienced. Got 10, 10, 10, 10. This is over. This is done. And this could be the end of a relationship. It could be, you know, the loss of a job. It could be any which way that it applies to you. You know, take it as it resonates. But it's time to let this go and it's time to move on. And it's time to stop restricting yourself with things that are behind you and move forwards. Why are these tens here? Aries, please. Why are these tens here?
We've got the ten of oh, we've got the nine of cups. Sorry, in reverse. I none of these cards are reversed, but these are how they're falling. They they're all they're all upright. But both of these cards, the nine and the ten, have come out in the reverse. Right? The nine of cups is about wish fulfillment. The ten of cups is about emotional fulfillment. Both of these things are closed in that cycle. You cannot take them with you from what has just ended. It's time to find something new. It's time to go off and look for that one cup. And I feel very strongly like that one cup for you, that ace of cups, if you will, is about you, not about anybody else. It's about you, you finding that cup, your self-worth, you know, your love of yourself and going forwards with that. But I sense really great fear of the future, fear of it being hard, fear of not being able to get this emotional fulfillment, fear of not ever being able to have your wishes fulfilled. And the future just seemingly feeling quite dark, but inherent within an ending is a beginning. Like, and like I said, the more space that you have, the more new things that you can bring in. I have one more card please for Aries. Yeah, and then we've got the Nine of Wands, like another card, another wand that has come up upright. Nine, nine, ten, eight. The Ten of Wands is the end, right? It's things literally just being too hard and you've got to drop them. This is a card of, of having to fight. And I feel like what you're having to fight for is, is that Ace, you know. What you're having to fight for is that that ace of wands and that ace of cups moment these are what you're looking for in order that you might heal and move forwards because there are beautiful things waiting for you aries and whatever they are they don't involve this you know take the lessons of what you've learned and move forwards do not take the fears of what has happened to you and carry them forward with you because it's time for a new cycle. It's time for things to start anew, differently. You've been picked up and put on a different path to the one that you had anticipated. And just because you cannot see the direction forwards, it doesn't mean that there aren't beautiful things ahead. But those currently are not visible to you. I'm drawn to the fact that you, you can't really see far in front of the boat here. Yeah. There's a level of trust that you have to imply imply apply to move forwards and know that where you're going is better than where you've been yeah. some cards of advice for aries please cards of advice for aries we've got the four of swords we've got the page of pentacles and Three of Swords. On the bottom of the deck, we've got Justice. It's time to set things right with you. Huh. This Four of Swords here, I don't know if you can tell, but that tree in the background is a woman. Right there. And she looks almost identical to the depiction of the woman here in the ice. And the difference between a woman stuck in the ice and being completely static and a woman who is a tree and who is able to grow is very important, I think. But this talks about taking a break. And because it's swords, it's breaks in communication, it's breaks in thinking, it's not overthinking things, it is taking a rest. It is time for you to take some time for you because then we've got the Page of Pentacles and increasingly for me over the last few months, this Page of Pentacles is talking about a new start, but rather than talking about money and resources and stuff like that, I'm really seeing the page of, of pentacles indicating the value of oneself. You know, it's discovering the value of something. But notice how he's holding it easily. He's holding it with one hand. He's not clutching to it here, like the four of pentacles is. You know, it's, it's moving forwards because he's right at the bottom of the hierarchy. He's got, you know, some way to go to get up to the king. But it feels very internal. It feels like the sense of self. You need to take a break from those things around you. Rest. 
allow yourself to heal and move forwards here and then we've got the three of swords like but rather than these being plunged into a heart these are plunged into the ground and so you could stand up and leave them behind you know in the rider weight this is just a big heart it's, it's speared by three swords these ones this, this woman's not happy clearly but she's put the swords in the ground and she will sit with them for a while until she's ready to move. And when she's ready to move, because if these two cards are really closely linked here, when she's ready to move, she will. But it needs to be with a really clear sense of your own self-worth, your own value, what you will accept and what you will not accept. It's, it's boundaries, actually. And the Nine of Wands talks about boundaries too. It's time to start imposing boundaries that keep you safe, that stop people from being able to trample all over you and leave you in this state, that stop you having to put so much of yourself into whatever it is that you're dealing with and keep you whole because you don't need another person to do that for you. Oof. Explains why that rush of energy made me feel so sick at the beginning of it. Like, I can see the pain that you're in, Aries. Sit with it, acknowledge it, don't repress it. Acknowledge it for what it is, but when you are ready, stand up and move away from those swords. Learn the lessons, whatever they were, from this situation. And start looking towards the dawn. Start looking to start again, I would say. Right, I feel like I kind of burbled on for quite a bit, but I think that the person, the people that I'm talking to, will completely understand this. So I'm going to leave it here, because um, I don't want these to go on too long. Um, best of luck, Aries. Right, you've got this. There's a big le life lesson in here for you, but it is the end. Now, the cycle starts again, but it starts better. It starts with you, better understanding of yourself and what you're worth and what you will. What you will accept and what you won't, you, you know, put your crown straight. It's time to move on, All right? Take care, Aries. I'll see you uh, in January for the, gen uh, the general readings.